Hey guys, it's your boy Roy, and I'm going to start this video with a simple question. I'm going to uh, describe a genre of video games, and you have to guess which one I'm describing. Okay, so we've got a game where your knowledge of the enemy is rewarded. You are constantly growing, not just as a player, but your character is also growing. It's improving, learning new skills, uh, getting new weapons. Uh, so you have a feeling that not just you grow because your knowledge of the enemies, the bosses, their patterns, uh, their abilities, their weaknesses grows, but also your character. Uh, sometimes these games have a single playable character, sometimes they have multiple that have different specific abilities or something that makes them stand out. Uh, and on the flip side, it's also a game that uh, has like split second decision making involved. Or sometimes you need to think long term. Uh, mistakes that you make early on in a fight can bite you in the ass later uh, with dire repercussions. Now, you're probably thinking like, that's an action game! Well, fuck you, I just described an RPG. Um, and I think this sort of highlights uh, why these games are often intermixed. Uh, I often see the, uh, I mean, obviously what I just did, you can do with every game. Like, you can make genres sound differently by just playing with someone's mind and their expectations. But what I kind of wanted to show here is that uh, recently, or at least in the last generation of video games, most notably on the PlayStation 4, uh, like that era, we saw a rise in what we call action RPGs, and we saw a rise in RPGs with action elements. Um, it is no exaggeration that games like Final Fantasy are becoming more like Ninja Gaiden, and games like Ninja Gaiden are becoming more like Final Fantasy. Uh, they're slowly meeting each other in the middle, and in some cases even overtaking one another. Um, this is a very interesting thing that's happening to me, uh, because when it originally happened, I was quite interested in it. And right now, I'm slowly getting tired of it. Uh, and I'm going to try and explain in this video what my opinion is on the, uh, the, uh, yeah, the change, uh, and also why I think it happens. And I'm going to try and do that uh, using a couple of games to describe the situation. Most notably, it's a game that I've been wanting to talk to for a long time. Um, I've made numerous posts about it, both on Twitter and on uh, my website, which is Lost Odyssey. Now, Lost Odyssey is a traditional JRPG in the sense that uh, it's a turn-based uh, combat system. You level up your character, you gain new abilities, new skills, and you can inherit skills on certain characters from others. So, for example, later on you get a party member named Jansen, who's a mage. You can have one of your protagonists, Kaim, learn skills from him. So Kaim can become this sort of warrior-wizard combination. Uh, there's only a limited amount of skill slots that your character has, so you have to constantly make decisions. And there's a possibility to do a no upgrade run in the sense that you only have two slots per character instead of the, I think you can get like 110 near the end. So you can just uh, uh, pump it all up. I think it's 50, 55. It's a giant number. Uh, the beauty of Lost Odyssey is that it starts off pretty difficult. Uh, so you have to constantly manage your resources, use skills smartly. For example, use anti-poison as an ability, making you immune to poison, uh, for the first boss. Otherwise, he's just going to decimate you. So you need to plan ahead, and you need to think accordingly towards the boss fights. Uh, what this means is that you win not just by grinding, but you win by playing smart. Uh, it's no exaggeration, especially because the game has a sort of gated leveling system. Um, so if you start grinding, eventually you will get zero experience or like one experience uh, because the game has sort of a hard level cap. Like if you're here in the game, you can't level beyond this uh, level scale. Of course, you can use some gear setups and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, if uh, I think the boss is called Bargo Morai, uh, it's the second uh, real boss. If you get stuck there, no amount of grinding is going to help you. You need to learn his pattern. You need to have a battle plan or else you're going to die. And this is what I like to call sort of the scale of uh, how do you earn your win? And sometimes if I stumble, like, please forgive me. 
Um, and did you win because of what your character is or what you offered? Uh, for example, in Ninja Gaiden, when you win, it's most generally speaking you winning. It's not Ryu winning because he has a stronger weapon or because you leveled him to level 99. Obviously, there is some input from the character. Uh, to grab Ninja Gaiden as an example again, because it's something I know a lot about, uh, in Ninja Gaiden Black, um, your weapon, when it's upgraded, also deals more damage. This is something not a lot of people know, uh, because everybody just upgrades their weapons consistently, and the enemy health sort of scales throughout the game to sort of compensate for that. But try doing a no-upgrade run or attacking a, a late-game boss with a level 1 Lunar and you will laugh at the amount of damage you will do. It is negligible. Uh, you barely phrase them. Um, so there is input from uh, like Ryu's level, like how much you level his gear, but it's not the point. Like I would say when you win, it's like 80% you, 20% what Ryu has an offer in terms of how much uh, you level his Nimpo, uh, how much you level his weapons. Um, in Lost Odyssey, at the start, it is exactly that as well. It's 20% what skills you gave your characters, but it's 80% like how you use them, how you timed it. Uh, did you know that the boss always does this move before that move so you can anticipate it? Do you know his elemental weakness? Uh, for example, do you know that... Uh, God, I forgot the name, but there's a boss later on in the game that's uh, very vulnerable to sleep. Did you know that? Or that there's a caster boss that you can just bind. Uh, I always say bind because that's a term from Golden Sun, but that you can lock his uh, spellcasting ability so he can't cast anymore. Those sort of things make you feel like the input. Um, and I think for an action game and also for an RPG, this is a net positive. I think for RPGs, you might argue the fact that it could be 50 50. Um, and this sometimes rears its head in Lost Odyssey's super bosses. Uh, near the end, there's a boss called Emperor Phi, Emperor Phi. Um, he's a high or high priest Phi or high priest Phi. Doesn't matter. Um, he's a shaman boss. What's unique, unique about him is up until that point in the game, you can always use specific character buffs to keep your character alive uh, beyond what he should normally handle. Uh, you can give them abilities to ignore elemental damage. Or you can, during a fight, buff them with shields that significantly reduce elemental or physical damage, or both. You can give yourself auto-healing buffs, uh, damage buffs to deal damage way beyond your uh, low-level threshold. All these certain abilities to, split, uh, to sort of reward players for playing smarter instead of harder, I always say. Emperor Fi just ignores all that. If you buff yourself, he has an automatic ability that activates automatically, because that's the word automatically, I don't need to say it twice, um, that removes your uh, buffs, so it doesn't work. He only deals non-elemental magical damage, so you cannot protect yourself with skills. Uh, he is basically a stat check. If you are a low-level character, it is nearly impossible, or I would dare say impossible, I haven't found any video of anybody doing it, uh, to kill him, because every turn he will just do a set amount of damage, which will one-shot a large part of your party, and you will be busy resurrecting others uh, and praying they'll stay alive. Uh, and this is just phase one. In phase two, he clones himself, starts healing himself, and he just does all sort of wacky shit. Um, and it was a downside of the game for me, because up until that point, I felt I was playing a JRPG where my player skill mattered more. Uh, now, that's a very selfish thinking pattern, because uh, I like to consider myself, like, when I'm playing a JRPG with an action mindset, like, I need to win because what I do, I am a visitor uh, in that genre. It's not my mainstay, it's not my mindset that fits that ideal. Uh, if I play many other RPGs, like Dragon Quest, I have Dragon Quest Eight, the one with Gohan, I always say it's the one with Gohan. Or even Golden Sun, uh, which I really adore, or Pokemon. Yes, there are instances where you can win by playing smart, but generally speaking, the level wins the game. Um, and this is something that a lot of people in those games enjoy. Uh, this comes from the nature of seeing your character grow. You invest in him, you plan, which is still a strategic element. Uh, you, For example, in a competitive Pokemon of you making the moveset, 
like tweaking the stats, like it's all like you're creating this fighting machine and then let it do the fighting for you. Uh, so the creation process is very enjoyable for people. Uh, also in the ten terms of just upgrading things. I mean, you saw it in uh, my one of my previous videos about Vanquish. Even though there's a ton of fun to be had, just a shitty upgrade system is sometimes already enough to make people do something they don't want uh, or play in a way they shouldn't. Um, and with RPGs, you see that happen very often. And like I said, personally speaking, I think it's best if it's a middle road. Now, what we're seeing with action games is a bit of the inverse. Uh, like I said, Ninja Gaiden is like 80% you, 20% the game. Slowly and steadily, we're seeing like with games like Neo, uh, we're seeing it being switched around. It being 80% the character, 20% you. Uh, it's no exaggeration that with Neo you can play basically every way you want. I sometimes call it a create your own action game, action game. Uh, you want to play it like a shooter? Go ahead, there's probably a build for it. Um, you want to be a ninja that specializes, specializes in traps? Have fun. I mean, it's not the most optimal thing to do, but have fun, it's possible. Which is great. Um, but when you're struggling against a boss, which takes 30 minutes to kill, and you see another guy with a specific build killing him in five seconds, that's not something I enjoy myself. Uh, and that's the point, what I talk about with RPGs, is that a lot of the fun for those players is cultivating that build, planning it out, and then seeing it in action. You press one button and the thing just explodes. Uh, for me, that's fun, like, for five minutes, and then I'm like, okay, I want to play the game again. I want to play with the parry mechanics, with the key pulse, with the yokai abilities. Uh, that holds my attention. Um, and for example, in uh, uh, another, in my opinion, one of the best action R uh, RPGs, like the two that come to mind are Dark Souls 1 uh, and Kingdom Hearts 1, uh, both of which have, I would say, the perfect 50-50 balance. You can beat those games at level 1 just by playing smart and using what RPG elements there are, or you can let the RPG elements carry you till the end. Both are extremely viable and extremely rewarding in their own way. Um, you aren't punished for playing one way or the other. If you're playing Kingdom Hearts smartly using all your specific abilities in specific ways, like using magic that enemies are weak against, uh, using summons in smart combinations like against Maleficent, you can summon Bambi, which gives you infinite mana, and then you just spam gravity because it deals percentage damage, um, paired with uh, stop, so she freezes, so you can just spam gravity. Uh, that's playing smart. Uh, you can also just grind to level 99, use Ultima weapon, and just hack your way to victory uh, while constantly spamming healing items. It's possible. Um, there are obviously some boss fights that might twist a bit more from one end to the other, uh, like Sephiroth, for example, in Kingdom Hearts 1. And Dark Souls 1 is exactly the same way. Uh, most of the difficulty from that game comes from knowing enemies and knowing uh, the, uh, their patterns, playing into that. And if you're level 1, there's still enough methods to boost your damage high enough that it boss fight doesn't take forever, which is great. Um, but you can also just skip the game by using the RPG elements and cultivating a good character. Uh, in the original, especially before the remaster, like iron builds, I, I always call them iron builds, but the, the build where you're using iron flesh, Havel's armor, you just tank all the hits and you smack them really hard, or just use pyromancy, which is a, a non-scaling damage uh, ability. Uh, like it, you just level that glove, uh, or the, I always call it a glove, but it's not a glove, just a flame. Um, I find that interesting. Like those games are really at the, the middle point. Um, but what we're seeing now is it's always like one or the other. Uh, I see I'm very rarely a middle point game. Um, like when I was playing Wulong, uh, the demo, it played very well. I really enjoyed the gameplay mechanics for what was on offer. Uh, obviously, I disliked some of the stuff that was going on. Like, oh, I got to run back to the boss again. Oh, there's bonfires. I mean, flags or shrines that... You know, you, you get my point. Like Some of those mechanics are getting a bit tiresome for me. Um, but the gameplay seemed fun until I look at all the stats and I see like, okay, I saw some footage online of people beating the boss or certain enemies that I was playing smartly with and they beat them by just 
steamrolling them in seconds. And like the, the, the effort compared to the result was just way out of whack. Um, and you see that more and more with games these days. Uh, I think this is also a bit related to difficulty in general. Um, and what I might say now, I, it might be controversial, I don't know, uh, but I'm, I don't really care. Um, people that play hard games tend to not want to play hard games. <laughs> uh, you see this a lot uh, subtly, like people play, for example, Ninja Gaiden. Again, Ninja Gaiden, easy example. Uh, or even Devil May Cry on the highest difficulty setting, and they fucking hate it. Uh, game's unfair, busted, broken, bullshit, I don't care. Nothing is their fault, it's all the game's fault. And when you ask why they're still playing it, I gotta get the achievement, I wanna get 100%, um, you wanna get the platinum. And I'm like, why? You obviously don't like to play hard games. Uh, you don't wanna be challenged, you just wanna win and feel accomplished. Um, and that's something that an action RPG allows. You can build an incredibly difficult game and sort of have like a cheat back door in there. So you can say like, I beat, I beat Neo. You know, I immediately went to the most broken, overpowered build and killed everything in a single hit, but I beat it. Uh, just like you, Mr. Uh, who did it with a shitty build because he's really good at the game. Um, it doesn't rob me of my accomplishment feeling. I, I want to make that clear. I often see like people saying like, oh, that guy ruined this game for me. Uh, a friend of mine, he beat Sekiro by being playing like the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. But it doesn't take my accomplishment away. Like I felt accomplished for beating a, a game like on the, I did like a no upgrade stuff thingy, blah, uh, what's it called Demon Bell with uh, no talisman, uh, which I enjoyed. Um, but like it, it feels like they're making a backdoor, like a cheat. Like I, 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 we, we know you want to play hard games, but we know you suck and you don't really, really, really want to be reminded of it. So here's a really hard game, but you can sort of like, eh, yeah, just, just take uh, the RPG uh, door and then, uh, eh? uh, I think that's both disingenuous to the player and also to your general audience because, like I said, I personally don't feel cheated. But generally speaking, what is going to happen is I'm going to be frustrated uh, because I will be fighting a boss for like 30 minutes because I deal zero damage to him because I don't care about having a sword that has 5% more of this and 2% more of that. And then I got to combine it with armor sets that have West of the Wild set piece number one out of 10. And I got to combine it with all oh my fucking Lord, just shut up. I can handle that for like one game. <laughs> and then I go crazy. Um, and... That's fine if you're playing an RPG. Like if I play World of Warcraft or I play a Lost Odyssey, I don't mind managing your inventory. That's part of what you buy into. Uh, with an action game, I'm less inclined to do so. I'm okay with stuff like little armlets or uh, like uh, or little trinkets that give special abilities and stuff like that. I heard that Ma Magenta Horizon, which is an action game coming up by an indie developer, has. That's great. Um, but personally speaking for action games, it just frustrates me because you're leaning more towards one play style than the other, which is the opposite of the one it should have. Uh, I think it would be the same that, uh, for example, Lost Odyssey is a game that I truly enjoy. But if you look up online, there's a lot of people that dislike it because I can't grind my way to victory. I can't just level up my character and then win. I need to play smart. I need to learn their patterns and stuff. For me, that's interesting. But for the general audience of the genre, that might not be. And it's the same with action. I think that's mostly the conclusion I'm coming to. Is it's cool that you want to make action more RPG, but leave it as a small option and don't let it take over. And slowly and steadily with each release, we see it more and more take over. We see damage numbers. We see uh, other things that come with it, like stamina bars. We see gear level. Um, and more and more, every time a new action game comes out, it's like, oh yeah, it's one of those. Now, traditional action games as a result are, some will say dying out. Um, I don't necessarily agree with that, but they are a lot smaller in skill. Like on the PlayStation 2, we really experienced what I like to call the boom of the action games. It was the popular genre at the time. Um, and this, there's always been a popular genre at the time. Uh, back in the uh, NES uh, days, it was the simple platformer. You had a ton of clones. Uh, then in the SNES, uh, SNES uh, era, it was like the RPG. So you had a ton of RPGs. 
the PS1 era, I'm gotta be honest, I don't really know a lot about that era, so I'm just gonna skip it. PlayStation 2 era, action games. Everywhere were action games. Uh, DMC really, uh, even though uh, I personally prefer Ninja Gaiden, DMC and God of War especially, those two really set a standard uh, for a combination of action and storytelling with arcade uh, sensibilities that people just hooked into and there were a ton coming out. It was the hype of the time. Uh, then in PlayStation 3 era, we got more like an emphasis on uh, Souls games, which got popular there, but more peaked in the PS4 era where everything is a Souls-like. Uh, and in the PS3 era, also the narrative games uh, became very popular. And now we're more seeing the Battle Royale, which is also sort of dying out slowly because that hype has passed. And now we're all moving on to the next hype, whichever it may be. Uh, I remember the PS3 era had the zombie hype, you know. Uh, maybe it will be survival shooters next or third-person shooters. Everything will be third-person shooters. We don't know. Um, you saw with the FPS era as well, like after Halo and stuff like that. Uh, and action games had its time, uh, so I'm not too surprised, especially considering they're, I would, I'm not a developer, but I would estimate that those games are pretty difficult to make uh, on a mechanical front to make a good one. Um, uh, in terms of animation, not just that, but enemies, design, how the levels play into them, I, I can't imagine them being easy to make. Uh, so how does that work in today's field? Like, you still have some action games, they're just B like B-level, like, uh, for example, Samurai Jack Battle Through Time was a really fun game for me, uh, which was what you could consider a pure action game, even though it still had uh, uh, skills that you could buy that increased your damage significantly, kind of like the way you upgrade your weapons in Ninja Gaiden. Um, but here it was really noticeable <laughs> in terms of that you just deal a lot of damage. Uh, the game was broken as fuck, like, there was a ton of jank, uh, like, uh, my favorite example is you could do like a spin kick and then land on top of an enemy and Samurai Jack would just be like, I, I want to get down because he was in the falling animation, but he doesn't fall down because the enemy is too big. So he just sort of hovers there and constantly deals falling damage to that guy. And just suddenly, you know, some of that's fun. I don't mind that. Uh, but what I notice more and more is that people want a big budget traditional action game uh, that isn't and maybe I'm paraphrasing here, isn't a stylish action game. Um, uh, one of the only two real survivors that are AAA are Bayonetta, uh, which might be double A now, um, and uh, Devil May Cry, both of which we, you could consider the stylish subtext. Um, someone that I follow on Twitter, uh, Kayam, he described it very beautifully that uh, Devil May Cry fans describe Devil May Cry as mo uh, most action games. Uh, which is ironically because most action games do not play like that game. Uh, so you have a really large gap of action game styles that are now absent or getting not, not getting new releases. Um, games that are more focused on uh, sword battles or efficient gameplay, uh, throw gameplay. They're all vanishing. You, uh, games that use traps uh, in favor of yeah, the, the two that survived. Um, or just brutal gameplay like Ninja Gaiden is also vanishing. Uh, more finding its home uh, in Neo, but you really got to build your character in a specific way that you don't sort of get behind the curve, but that's a different discussion. Um, and as a result, there's not a lot. Um, what I can offer on the flip side, though, uh, because personally, I would love to see a high-budget, just full-on action game. Um, is it viable? Absolutely. Uh, I often hear the complaints like, oh, these games are too expensive to make, blah, 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 blah. Inflation is a thing. There's a lot of really well-written documentaries about game pricing and how we're basically sort of being misled into thinking that games are being too expensive to make. So they need to make DLC and they need to have microtransactions. Otherwise, they're never going to be profitable. All the numbers are public. You can look them up. It's all bullshit. Um, there's an especially good video about it. I... I'll probably link it in the description if I remember to. But uh, in terms of traditional action games, what I can offer is the following. There are more traditional action games out than you can ever master. So maybe we don't need any new ones. Um, obviously, getting a new one is a good thing. Um, I, I wouldn't mind getting a really good new Ninja Gaiden. Obviously, I would never say no to that, even though I feel like the series should remain silent. 
Um, but there, when I hear people say, oh, I really want a new action game, I'm really uh, getting tired of those uh, action RPGs. Have you played Bu Bugaijin Blade? Have you played Nightshade? Have you played Marlow Briggs? Have you played Warrior Within? Uh, half the people that say this haven't even played the classic God of War trilogy. Uh, or only played Devil May Cry 4 and haven't even touched the first or the third game. Um, if you feel attacked by this, like saying, oh, he's probably talking about me, I'm not talking about anyone in particular in my mind. So don't feel offended. Um, but like I said, there's more than enough action games. Like even just singular Ninja Gaiden 2, if you want to go for mastery, that game is going to take you like three, 400 hours. Now, I don't know about you, but for me, that's like a couple of years worth of game time because I've got a job, I'm a freelancer, I've got other hobbies that I enjoy doing. Um, yeah, so that that's a pretty big dedication because especially these games, they're not just you pump and dump. Like the first playthrough was basically the tutorial and then we get going. Uh, me, myself, right now on my backlog of games I want to uh, still get into, I still want to do challenge runs in Master of God of War 2, God of War 3. I still want to uh, uh, finally finish and get into Bugaijin Blade or Bujingai Blade or whatever it's called. Uh, I want to replay Shinobi again because I really like that one. Uh, then we got Transformers Devastation. Still want to get into that. Despite its RPG mechanics, it looks really cool. I never played the Nier games uh, or Nier or I always call it Nier Tomato. I never played that one. Sounds interesting, even though it's a, a bit of a newer one. Um, still want to replay Ninja Guy in Black one time. I, the list keeps going, you know, uh, and just going through my bookcase over there, I'll probably find a couple more action games. Like, oh yeah, I still want to play that one. Like, what's over here? Uh, da, 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 da. All right, Metal Gear Solid 3. Some people will say it's not an action game. Tactical espionage action is in the title. Uh, Dead Rising, Jack, I'm replaying Warrior Within right now, which makes me think, ah, I want to replay Sands of Time again. Um, and this is coming from someone who has played, try, or at least tried to play most of the action games at least once. Uh, but I still haven't played Ghost Rider. Still haven't played, uh, a Night, I think it's Nightmare Before Christmas or uh, something like that, which was made by a part of the Capcom team. There is a fuck ton. Hollow, Hollow Knight. Still haven't played that one. Um, so it just keeps on going. There's such a huge amount of action games out there. It's impossible. Uh, or becoming more and more impossible to play and enjoy them all at a decent level. A Ninja Warriors, uh, fucking good game. Played it twice. I, I gotta keep. Uh, I gotta get back to that. Um, I still haven't beaten uh, Dante Must Die difficulty in DMC One on my PS2. Like I have it on the HD version, but I want to play it on this one, even though Triangle to Jump sucks. But I hope you sort of get the point I'm getting to. That while I agree that action RPGs are sort of taking over the action part. So the RPG is becoming more important. The winning of the character is more important than player skill. The, ca the games that did it the other way around, there are so many of them. Uh, they are so plentiful and they have so much to offer. Play those. And in the interim, I swear, there will be a little indie game that comes out that gives you a modern take, like Wanted, uh, which is coming out soon uh, by uh, Soleil. Or I think Valkyrie Elysium is also from Soleil, looking pretty solid. Uh, despite my grievances, Wulong will probably be a great game as well. Um, and these are just mainstream games. We've also got uh, Streets of Rage 4, uh, Fight and Rage, I think it's called. Uh, there are so many games out there. And uh, Kingdom Hearts 4 is coming out, which will probably offer another great balance between action and RPG. So yeah, um, would I like to see more traditional action games? Absolutely. But there is so much out there. I think it's disingenuous to say that uh, we need more. You know, uh, at some points, uh, it's also good to just be happy with what you have, uh, and you can always ask for more. Obviously, um, and I would, I will do the same. I mean, I'm constantly on Twitter saying, oh, "I want a more traditional action game. Give me oh, another stamina bar." You know, um, but yeah, that's my take on it. Uh, in the reason why it's happening, I don't really know. It's probably a trend um, started by hot, uh, seeing games being very successful in word of mouth. And I think, like I said, that backdoor exit towards cheating your way to a higher difficulty game and beating it uh, with RPG mechanics, it makes more sales in a sense. Maybe that's a thing. I don't know. Um, that's basically all I have to say about this game. 
uh, or not about this game, about this topic at large. Um, I made an article about it like two or three years ago, or maybe five years ago, actually, um, uh, called the RPGs in uh, Action Games on Stinger Magazine. This article is dated, um, but there are some points in there that I still think hold value. What I want to end up end with is just saying that if you're an action game fan, give Lost Odyssey a try. Uh, it's an RPG that really plays with the mechanical side of things instead of the RPG side of things. Uh, especially in the early game, uh, obviously it has the typical RPG shortcomings in a lot of plot, a lot of cutscenes, a lot of walking around and puzzles. Uh, but the combat is very interesting. It has a good soundtrack as well. It's pretty lengthy, but not too long compared to other RPGs. And it has a good story with a pretty interesting premise. Um, if anything that you would get from this video, let it be that you should try and check out Lost Odyssey. It's backwards compatible on the Xbox One and Series One or Series X or whatever the fuck they call that one. Uh, which I would recommend playing on because on the original Xbox 360 it's a bit laggy. Uh, because it was a pretty ambitious game at the time. Uh, you can also see it because it comes with like four discs. Uh, <laughs> like there's even a little sleeve here for extra discs and there's like four stacked on top of each other here or three there's four discs in total i think four dvds um uh so yeah at least give this game a shot if you're a big rpg fan that likes these games for the, the grind and the storytelling you might find the combat a bit hard to swallow in this one but for an action gamer that's a visitor to the rpg genre i think this is a great game to play um I probably forgot to mention something, uh, but I hope at least uh, to summarize my opinion is clear. Uh, and uh, if you have any questions, please leave a comment. Like I said, I'll try and do these videos a bit more often because I think they're fun to do. Uh, they're a bit more unscripted uh, and just me talking my mind. Uh, so I hope you have a nice day and I will see you guys again soon. And uh, please leave a comment uh, because I always like replying and reading what people say. Uh, I don't really care about likes. I don't care about subscribes. Don't give a fuck. Who cares about those analytics? I just want to talk to you guys. So leave a comment. Bye-bye.